Hey, how's it going guys? Domino Paris 21 here and back to bring you guys my ARG Richmond tournament report and of course gonna be briefing you guys in on the deck that I ran of course. Now uh, yeah overall uh, had a great day, great experience at the event. Uh, if you guys actually uh, didn't know I was able to make second place at the event. Um, so very successful day on my, uh, on my part I, uh, I feel. Uh, granted, of course, you know, ultimately I would like to have um, made the number one spot and win my finals match, but unfortunately I wasn't able to do that. Things probably didn't go the way I wanted. And also at the same time, you know, cross mirrors can be pretty tough. And also I was playing against uh, another great player that I knew. So uh, definitely shout out to Leo Dong for your win and congrats for your first place uh, finish again. So, uh, yeah, as far as the my deck is concerned, now, you guys already know I'm playing the cross, as you see here, as I mentioned. And you guys may have already seen my deck profile that I've done already on the cross. And if you guys already saw my list, um, it's actually a lot different from that deck profile compared to this. So if you see here, I am playing the great, I actually am playing the great for the ARG Richmond. And, you know, I, I still am not a big, huge fan of the great honestly, um, just for how my playstyle is with the deck, but I thought to go ahead and give him another shot and run like a 9 grade 3 lineup again, like I initially did, uh, just because I, I kind of wanted just to make sure that I wasn't missing out on any opportunities I was maybe missing out of running that lineup, because I didn't test it too thoroughly, I just didn't, I had bad impressions on it, and I was talking again with another buddy of mine that actually ran this, um, that ran uh, this lineup like this, and we talked about it, and we kind of talked about different plays you can go with it, and you know, I decided to just go with that and really, you know, I guess test it out in the ARG event, I guess, because I didn't really have too much time to do a lot of thorough testing on it. But I still like that previous profile I have. I think I still think that's a very optimal build as well for the cross. It's just another take on it, but it really does depend on player preference and play style because, you know, I think, I think a lot of people out there are just so quick to just say a deck is bad just because it doesn't follow the same cookie cutter build as a lot of other players do. But, you know, honestly, guys that first profile I put, it was a profile that I was, it was a deck list that I was showing success with in my locals on a consistent basis, but I wanted to go with the gray just because I think I may have missed, I think this can be a slightly, this is a slightly better build, and I, I do admit that I, I think I was missing, uh, missing out on some good opportunities that the great can still offer. Not really maybe as a legion, but I'll talk a little bit more um, in details as I proceed. Um, but yes, anyways, now talking about my tournament experience. So of course I took made the trip down there with my good buddy Warlock in 36. I live fairly close to Richmond. It's only like an hour, 30 minutes away, which is honestly not that bad of a drive at all compared to other trips I had to other major events. So yes, it was really, really good relief that finally there's a, a you know, a nice event to go to um, that's fairly close by. And uh, yeah, we had a, about a 40 player turnout I think so it's not a huge turnout and you know granted Virginia I don't think it's like one of the biggest places for Vanguard necessarily but you know I was still happy with the turnout in in terms of you know the people I was meeting I met a lot of, I met uh, really good cool people definitely want to give a shout out to Team Absolution um, and definitely want to give a shout out to Greg De Palma and his channel TCG Weekly I'm gonna have links in the description below for the YouTube channels but definitely a great group of people and had some great matches with Greg De Palma so Really had a go, really had a great chance meeting these guys and um, definitely support these guys, man. They're really uh, really good players and really great stand-up guys. So, um, in terms of the tournament, how it went, so we had six rounds of Swiss, um, and then after that, of course, we cut the top eight. I was X one in Swiss, and my first loss, my for, my loss was actually in the, in the first round, which of course you know was not a really great start for me in the tournament, and I actually lost to a Nova Grapper player, but particularly. Um, one of my local players uh, that I, of course, I've been playing with for a while, and it's it's very interesting because I remember like almost a year ago, you know, he was kind of just starting out the game, having fun with him and his son, and I, he really stepped up and you know improved his play, and you know we had some pretty good games, but um, you know my deck I think died on me, as my buddy were like in thirty six said after the round, but. Basically, game one, it was just a good example of, you know, Kagura versus Nova Grapplers and the matchup that Kagura can have most of the time against Novas. So I was able to win uh, just based on that. Game two was really awkward for me just because since I wasn't drawing into any, like, 10k shields or any or drive-checking any 10k uh, shield triggers, 
didn't really have much defense to go with, and he was actually able to open up pretty well offensively, get some nice good board presence, and I wasn't drawing and taking like key cards to really address his board, and you know, I had a really, really bad start. So I finally, once I was able to get into the groove of things and started grinding the game out by turn six or seven, uh, it was a really good back and forth game from there. Um, and I think it did come down to him. I was I guarded his uh, Vanguard for two to pass, and he banked on his Vanguard in terms of the double trigger, so he was able to get there. You know, which happens. You know, it's part of Vanguard taking calculated risks. Going back, I may ha may could have made a more optimal guarding decision that same turn uh, to maybe put myself in a better position to avoid that. But you know, honestly, it's kind of hard to predict these things. But Honestly, I do still think that um, I could have made a more optimal play, so I think that was maybe uh, my fault uh, for you know not not uh, seeing that beforehand. And then game three, my deck just died. Uh, after Mulligan, I had like one and all zeros. I had the G assist for the two. I had the G assist for the three. So I kind of gave up at that point because I he was able to open up a great board as well. So that was it for round one for me. Rough start, like I said. Um, round two. I actually played uh, played against another Nova Grapper player, Cat Riser particularly. Um, due to my experience playing against David of I'm Vanguard, um, I pretty much had a good notch, a good feel for dealing with them, dealing with Cat Riser. So game one, just was able to just take advantage of the matchup I had and the experience I had um, against uh, Cat Riser, and it was able to win that. Game two, my opponent was gray locked on zero for three turns. He didn't seem to want a G assist, and he didn't seem very happy at all. Of course, being in that position, so after like his third turn, he just kind of just gave me the handshake, gave me said good game, and I was done with the round. So it was pretty quick. Um, next for my round three, I actually played against a Royal Paladin player. Uh, he was playing the Ez Ezel deck. Uh, not Blonde Ezel, but the Alfred Legion. So it was a very interesting build, um, and I think it was a nice breath of fresh air just because, you know, I was just so used to playing with Thing Saber, Alt Mile, and such. But um, I think the only problem with that deck uh, in terms of, like, winning games is that I don't think they can really overpower your opponent offensively, like Thing Saber, Alt Mile. So, you know, if you, and if you're really going toe-to-toe -to -toe on a grind-out game with the cross, most likely you're going to have a really tough time trying to, you know, trying to beat him out. So I was able just to take advantage of that. But I think I was very impressed with the deck, and... It was actually a pretty fun uh, game as well. Uh, next round four, so I won that round, so I was two, X1. So next round four, I played against Revengers, and um, yeah, it, it was just uh, Revengers are Revengers, and um, luckily for me, I had the tools needed to kill the Judge Battle, so I just constant Judge Battle hate, um, which was great. And I think we end up finishing the round 2-1. I can't remember the details because it was a little while ago now um, that AOJ Richmond was, so... Uh, overall, I was just able to kill it. I know the two games I won, I was able to kill his Judge Bow and keep, you know, grinding out the board and keep wearing him out with my strides and the cross. So uh, I was able to win out that way and I held off against his offensive push. Um, and then next was round five. I actually had a cross mirror, but it was a little bit different twist. Uh, I actually faced against uh, Braxton of Team Absolution. Uh, definitely shout out to you, man. Uh, he was actually running Novell in his deck as well, and it was very interesting. I saw him like call a Nova Roman and shove. Uh, he put the Novell back in his deck to search for the cross. So I thought it was pretty interesting um, to see. Uh, but yeah, it was a very weird game, uh, just because the first game was 35 minutes long, and uh, he was able to hit like a consistent flow of triggers, like draw in combination of draws, crits, heals, and I hit a few too as well. But he was hitting a lot of triggers on his end, so. I was kind of playing a little bit of catch up, of course, and of course with the cross mirror, you know, it's going to take a while to really catch up because the cross is not really a aggro overpowering deck, it's a grind down deck. So we were just going back and forth, back and forth. I was really taking advantage of my strides to really um, control the board and eventually um, I ended up winning with deck out because, and what actually made the difference was the great. Uh, just because I was, I kind of like used up the cross in my hand to Persona Blast and wear out his field so I can be able to defend easier. Because um, I already had the great in hand, so I was just planning to perform a Legion. So once after I Legion, I actually had more cards in my deck than him. And I think I was able to, and we were kind of playing chicken back and forth, not calling rear guards. But I finally did, because I wanted to try and bail out the cross in his hand so he can't re-Legion, which, 
he actually did, and because of that, he wasn't able to make a re-legion play, so while I did with the great, so I was able to get ahead in the deck count, and I was able to gra to just, um, well, I still beat him anyway, like, like damage-wise, but at the same time, he decked out, so that was kind of weird, uh, but yeah, and then game two, since we were getting very close to time, I literally just took a gamble and just rushed, I start opened up with, like, all twos, ones, and, like, a three, so I was able to just rush him down three attacks per turn, um, right from the start, so he was, um, here, and fortunately for me, he wasn't able to recover, so I was able to just win out that way. Um, so it took like five minutes. <laughs> so it was a really interesting round. And then next was round six was Gear Chronicle. And definitely want to give a big shout out to Greg De Palma for uh, representing his store, Atlantis Games, and his YouTube channel, TCG Weekly. Greg De Palma is definitely one of the most stand-up players I've ever met. And honestly, with the, the, the sportsmanship, that he really showed uh, throughout the tournament, at least you know my experience with him, uh, I think that really shows a great example of you know I think for the community in general. But it was a really great back and forth match with me versus him, and, and he, of course he was playing Gear Chronicle. Um, fortunately, I can't remember the exact details of, like the first two games. I know game one I was just able to just wear him out with the cross like like the cross does. Game two I think I made a guarding mistake because I uh, against Chrono Jet which can happen with Gears because they can sometimes be confusing if you're not really paying attention. Um, I think either or, he still would have won because it was a critical trigger that made it that, you know, that, um, that, you know, forced the win anyway. But bottom line is I still made a mistake, so I still try to address it when I can. Game 3 was very, really crazy because we were both back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, grinding out, um, you know, uh, both our skills because we were both going off like he was spinning all my cards all my rear guards I was killing all his rear guards and with the defining moment in that game it was really crazy because I remember the judge called time and the way ARG rules work with time is if you the minute they call time whoever has you stop playing whoever the most damage loses but the minute the judge calls time I was literally putting my hand on my deck to just um, to start drive checking because I remember asking the judge, I was like, hey, how much time is left? He was like, oh, I think about like four minutes. But then I was, you know, me and, me and Greg, we're like, okay, cool. So we're just like, you know, we're calm a little bit because we were trying to rush too because we knew that time was coming up. And all of a sudden he was like, oh, guys, you have less than a minute. He's like, oh, crap. And we were like, oh, crap. So we were both like just rushing, rushing, rushing. And, you know, and really like that, you know, although Greg was ahead, he was still having the courtesy to not stall. And he wasn't even taking his time. Like he was rushing along with me. So... I think that's really great sportsmanship, and that's a lot of respect that you know he definitely got from me for you know with that kind of a with that kind of attitude he had, and yeah, so I was four damage to his three. The judge mainly called time, but immediately Greg was like, "Oh, just hurry up, just drive check, just drive check. You already declared." So you know he could have sharked me on it, of course, but um, and you know it's understandable. But again, he had really great sportsmanship to let me do it. So I just went ahead and did it, and I actually hit a heal trigger in my drive checker, my drive check. So I was like, yes. So I healed. It was three to three, and we both back and forth, back and forth, and I was able to grind out in the end. I was able to win um, with uh, what's called sudden death. So after time is called, if the if damage is tied, it's sudden death. First change of damage wins. So I was able to get the damage in, and and it was able to win out. And luckily, you know, for Greg, um, he was X2 after that loss from me, but he was able to make top 8 regardless because there were three X2s that made top 8. So, hey, what goes around comes around, and he showed great positive attitude, and he, got, and he definitely got what he deserved. And <clears throat> it's a funny thing, too, because now proceeding to top 8, I actually faced Greg again for, um, in our top 8 match because he came in 6th place, I came in 3rd place after Swiss. So, yeah, we went ahead and did that, had... And I, I felt kind of bad in that game just because, you know, we were looking forward to a really good match. But uh, you know, we both kind of, like, were able to get in the gist of everything. But I don't think he drew really well in some games. And, you know, some and of course, you know, the cross is the cross. So I felt like, for the most part, for some of those games, I had a really good matchup with my deck. But, you know, that's really how card games are. And, you know, we, I still enjoyed my game and my experience of playing in the tournament with them. And... Uh, definitely, Greg, uh, if you're watching, I definitely look forward to playing another game with you, man. That was a really great game we had. Um, then, of course, for my top four, I placed against Greg Carl. I think he's like an admin on Vanguardians. Um, but, yeah, I was able to face him. I faced him and faced his Nova Grappler deck in top four. You guys, go ahead and, you guys can go actually go ahead and check out that match in the Ultra Reality Games um, on their YouTube channel. And the finals as well, faced Leo Dong in the mirror match of the cross. Wasn't able to win. 
and it was still a crazy game, but um, yeah, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed like every game I played. So you got, yeah, instead of me like briefing you guys on it, just go ahead and just watch those games. But yeah, so there you have it, guys. So of course I made second place. I, I kind of grown to like this mat a lot more. Um, although you know initially I didn't really like the artwork, but it's a little cartoonish. But you know whatever, Coco's on here in a swimsuit. Well, I mean you know what's there to complain about, honestly. But yeah, so yeah, guys, uh, just like I said. I'm going to go ahead and brief you guys in on my deck list. Now, my deck list is already up, like, on the ARG photos because, my, of course, I wrote a deck list. I did name the deck. X going to give it to you, uh, you know, because if you guys are, you know, growing up like me during the time of DMX, that was one of his song, hit songs. So I thought it was way too appropriate for this deck. Uh, but, yeah, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and just brief you guys just real quick on the deck. Uh, I'm not going to do too much explaining just because, you know, honestly, this is a pretty cookie-cutter deck. Um, but yeah, anyway, so starter course, I still play the Red Pulse Draco Kid. Definitely saved me a few games for preventing me from getting Greylock. So definitely a lot of credit goes to Red Pulse for helping me with some of my wins. Uh, great 3 lineup. You have the 4 cross, 3 the N, 2 the Great. Now, the, the thing with the Great is, I think in terms of his Legion skill, I think it helped me out maybe like 2 games. One game I did it, but I didn't really need to do it. But I kind of do it just to ensure myself the win, uh, to clinch the win, just to get some extra uh, uh, drive checks out, uh, guaranteed. But also, he helped me against the cross mirror with Novell that I mentioned, uh, just because it helped me, it gave me another Legion card to use uh, to prevent deck out. But what I like with the 9 grade 3 lineup, at least this time around, is it does give me a little bit more opportunities to really utilize Burnout um, as well. So... You know, the grade it was a really good stride target for me to discard while conserving my cross or the end pieces for the Persona skills. And I can still take advantage of Burnout. Um, so it was pretty nice just to have that extra target as well. And, you know, and even like I said, my first deck profile, even if I didn't get the cross, I even sat on the end a few games. I was still able to win no problem. It didn't even bother me as much. So, you know, like I said, I, 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 don't, even, I, don't, I probably don't even use the grade for what people intend to use like as like an alternate like ride, alternate legion and such, but he still had, he still had some great uses, but of course the deck is not really, that's not really the focus of the deck, but he still, uh, I think he still uh, put in good work throughout the day for me. Uh, the next, you have your four Burning Horn Dragons, of course. Four Burnout, definitely one of my MVPs of the day. Um, I was able to just knock out key cards, key starters, and everything. Um, I really was waiting to deal to deal with D Police, uh, just because I know D Police is the was one of the scary decks uh, that day, and I heard a lot of horror stories, uh, st horror stories how people was like break riding Dicos or Sinbuster, Laurel, and crazy checks, and you know I I don't want to I'd rather not face D Police, but I'm not, but I know I have the tools to handle them um, when I do, but I think my first round loss. The fact that I lost round one paired me up against all the people that lost the D-Police, so I didn't even get a chance to uh, play against them. But, um, yeah, anyways, Burnout, of course, one of my MVPs of the deck, and three Neo Flame. Now, in my first deck profile, I did run uh, deck uh, 12k attackers, but before then, I was actually running the Neo Flames with just the regular 4 the end and 4 cross. And Neo Flames, of course, I am playing them because, obviously, they're great, but Neo Flame actually put in a lot more work than I anticipated, um, especially my Nova Grappler matchups. Um, so it was really good just to help pressure my opponent's hand to prevent the Neo Flame skill from going off and still combos pretty well with, uh, with Burnout as well. So Neo Flame worked out a lot better than what I initially imagined for him. So really happy he was in my deck. Um, and also there were some games where, you know, like turn two, my opponents were like trying to rush me down and Neo Flame really put in that work for me. So really glad I put him in the deck. I had him in the deck, excuse me. Um, and grade ones. For Protect Orb, this is probably the only change I really kind of wish I kind of did. Um, I was going to actually, right before the tournament when I was writing my deck list, I was actually going to replace these with Baris, uh, just because, um, I don't know, I, I really want to replace these with Baris, just because I was afraid of the D-Police matchup with Laurel, because I didn't want them to stride, call Laurel, and attack my rear guard, and I can't really do much, and also the Cross Mirror. I didn't face, it didn't bother me too much with the Cross Mirror until the finals, where, you know, I kept, my opponent kept breaking my two pass after he attacked my rear guard, so I kind of wish I had the Bari, and I think the Bari would have, really, would have made a huge difference in those matchups, and, you know, and the Protect Orb, obviously, when it comes to unflipping damage, like, if you ever, if you guys ever see me play this deck, I don't really use up my Counter Blast, hardly ever unless I'm really like making a big push at my opponent which I should be winning anyway that I need to unflip afterwards so I, I may actually just take these out and put Baris in instead 
um, you know, for the near for the near future because I think they'll work a lot better for how I play this deck. Um, then you have your four Gojo, definitely another one of my M probably my MVP of my Grade One lineup uh, just because. I was able to open these up in multiples, especially when I had a really bad starting hand or I was going to be potentially grade lock. So I was able to open these in multiples. He helped save my hand, um, which was great. Uh, so yeah, Gojo, of course, you know, with, withstanding the test of time of just how effective this yet this simple yet very effective card is. So really glad I had him as a four of in the deck. Uh, then I had three Calamity Tower Wyvern. Um, now initially I was playing four, but I didn't like 4 just because, again, I'm not really focused on constant legioning all the time. And also with, with 4 Calamities, you know, I of course if I have multiple Calamities in my hand, I always feel, feel so inclined to use them. So it can have some interference with Burnout. And I felt that Burnout was just a bigger priority to take, take care of any key cards my opponent has that can really pose as a threat to me. Which I think there's a lot of matchups out there that do that does have that. As opposed to just drawing a card, which drawing a card is really good, but I feel that taking out any key cards that can really um, that can really cause a bad matchup for you, as opposed to just drawing an extra card, which you know I felt that was a little bit more of a priority for me. So really happy with the three calamities. I thought that was perfectly fine because I you kind of split focus in terms of my playstyle with the deck. Because sometimes, like again, I don't really legion too much, which would of course give you more opportunities to abuse the calamities. I do stride a lot. Um, a lot in a lot of my games depending on a lot uh, depending on my matchup so I thought the three was perfect for me and then last but not least uh, I have two lava flow dragons I am kind of looking for a second sign one because um, why not uh, but yeah the two was fine just give you another stride target so I thought that was a perfect number and that's for my trigger lineup I do have the four tars gotta tell you guys these tars came in clutch for me when I needed to hit those crits I needed I, they these tars came I remember when I like hit a double crit against my in my top four match. It was two tars I revealed, and these are rare tars that I had ever since I started this game. So, yeah, these these really uh, definitely hold good sentimental value for me. But yeah, guys, gotta run these rare tars. Kai does, and you see how it works for him. Uh, and then of course three crits. I didn't feel like doing singleton crits because I didn't feel like writing it out on my deck list. So whatever, didn't really matter to me. Four Gatling Claw, really amazing. Give rid of those key starters because starters need to die. One Artic Pique. Art, pick, whatever, Margo Clone, so 7 crit, 5 draw, and 4 heal. So, <coughs> simple as that, guys. Like I said, it's not the most exciting build, not the most original build, um, but, again, it's, a, it's just another great build. Um, and again, I like this build and my other, and my first profile as well, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and stick with this, of course, because, you know, it was able to show me good success in the ARG Richmond, but, yeah, guys, um, that is my report, and I guess, uh, deck profile of everything so uh, yeah i am planning to attend the arg nationals in pennsylvania so definitely for any of you guys going there i'll definitely see you there and once again guys thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys later peace and whoops sorry guys i almost forgot to show you guys my strides Ugh, sorry guys i'm being a little sloppy at this lately but yeah the strides are pretty straightforward um you have your four Root Flare Dragon. Um, definitely, I'd say he was really my MVP throughout the whole day um, because a lot of my matchups consisted of like aggro, few board presence style decks. So Root Flare was just in there, just get that instant kill on a column. And especially against Nova Grappler matchups, oh my, this ca this card put in so much work against those uh, crushing those Nova Grappler matchups. So uh, definitely like probably like my favorite card in the deck. Honestly, I love the artwork on this guy, and this guy just came in so clutch for me. So. Really amazing card. Um, then, of course, you have your three Mahmood. Um, just your simple on hit. He's obviously your simple on hit retire. So, um, honestly, I don't think I need him as a three of. I am running, like, the Atmos. The one Atmos as my, as my uh, eight stride card. And Atmos is really, really good. Um, just because after I was, I, like, in those late game scenarios where, like, I already used up the need for the cross. I don't, my opponents have five damage. I don't need to really go for a restand with the cross necessarily. Just going into Atmos is just really good because, you know, a lot of times at that point in the game, my opponent either used up all his perfect guards because I was already striding beforehand or he was dealing with the cross. Or, you know, if you don't think your opponent has one or, you, you know, you, they can't really, it's really tough to deal with, a, you know, a 41k plus column um, with Atmos. So I was actually considering playing a second one because there was a few occasions where I kind of wish I had the second one just to make that final push of my opponent. 
Uh, so that's probably what I will indeed do. I just don't have an Atmos, but I can probably easy get one. But that's probably the only change I would do in my stride lineup. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward lineup. And uh, yep, that's it.